podcast, Special Summer Sessions, where we'll be discussing all things athletics, all things Galen Eagles, all things sports. And today we will be talking about some sports development and we have some athletes with us in the house once again, products of Galen University. India, my lovely co-host, how are you doing this afternoon? Welcome guys, our guests, and I hope viewers enjoy what we have today. Afternoon, we're joined by William Murillo and Katina Gabriel. I'll give them the opportunity to introduce themselves. I, I see Will from time to time because we go to the same gym here in Mopan and he's always doing his thing. Um, and Katina, I understand, is a volleyball player, but I'll give them the first so that they could introduce Um, Hi, everyone. My name is William Murillo. I am 22 years old and I am a graduate of Yale University. Hi, I'm Katina. I'm 20 years old and I play volleyball for school and bubble gun. Yes, and this is my third year at Galen. And Will, what sport do you represent, Will? Um, I'm currently a powerlifter and I'm representing Belize actually at an international competition on August 4 in the Cayman Islands for powerlifting and when I was a student at Galen, I played basketball and volleyball for Galen University and I was a proud Galen Eagle. India, one thing, we, we have a lot of diversity when we talk about Galen athletes. Um, and look at it, we're actually always in the spring and leaving from university. Yeah. We're getting ready to go on a powerlifting at Cayman Islands. What, what about that? Um, I want to start off with a quote this afternoon, and the quote says, sports contribute to the love of life. It teaches sacrifice, respect, and responsibility, uh, leading to the full development of every human person. Um, I want to know what you, what, what's your take on that, Will and Katina? What do you think about sports and how it has impacted you as individuals? Um. I believe that sports sports has played a big role in my life um, because, first of all, I believe that sports has really helped to develop my social skills growing up. I was, however, shy, but a big role. I was a reserved person. I wasn't really outgoing as I was until I started to play basketball at a young age. I started to be a part of teams, and um, I really, I really started to enjoy the company of other people, and and it really taught me a lot of skills that, that I, I use in school and now that I'm currently using at work, such as being able to, to work along with people. It taught me a lot of um, team, team building skills. And I believe that sports has, I believe that I would be who I am today without sports. Sports has really shaped me and, and uh, my lifestyle is, uh, I can't remember the last time I was living without, without constantly playing some sport. And um, I'm, I'm really grateful for sports and how it has shaped me to be who I am today. Tina? Well, sports played a big role. I started to play volleyball around pretty 11 years, 12 years old. Um, very friendly person from ever since. And I heard that with me when I began with. Um, and since I love it and it gave me a boost of confidence for you know um you know I play volleyball and most of people were I don't think so then I show them you know it gave me that confidence to play the game and show them that what I can really carry out right. and um and with the team it gives me and I don't classify my just as you know, us we take each other as sisters and I love them dearly and we take care of each other. You so know, it's just that it gives us that bond to even have better chemistry on the court. Absolutely. Um definitely sports builds team chemistry. Um, especially if, if it's a team sport. Um certainly builds interpersonal relationships and skills 
when he was exiting a bit earlier. Um, I, w- I wanted to make a statement on, on something I wanted to post to, or I guess from press sessions, but now that I have the opportunity to do that, I'd like to ask, put yourself in the position, okay, you have this opportunity, right? You could either be, let's, let's say the minister of sport. If you were the minister of sport, what is the one thing that you would prioritize for sports development in Belize? Um, and I know, I know that's a big question, but I, I'm pretty sure that as athletes, you would think about how, how we could actually develop sports at Belize. If you were the minister and you had the power to do that, what's that one thing that you would would try to, to build on, Will? Um, I believe, I believe, firstly, what I would, I would look at, um, I would find, I would try to find a way to get, um, to get possibly a big object for sports in Belize for us to, to get the facilities and you know the, the, the equipment, the proper trainers, the proper, um, proper um, health personnel because you know a big part of sports is recovery, and um, you know for us to get you know professionals to. To do that stuff for the athletes, professional muscles and um, a different medication that they need, and like I said, the equipment because a lot of police sportsmen, I mean, a, a lot of us, you know, we grew up playing on on, mm-hmm. on cement courts that you know could in the future they damage their knees. Um, right now I'm in the gym. I I, I just recently picked up for lifting, but like even the equipment at my last international competition last year, like like. We're, we're, we're training with, with rusty equipment, you know. Yeah. So I, I believe that would be my main focus to try to, to, to get better facilities for the development of sports. And also, I would try to engage the youths in, in starting at a younger age. Mm-hmm. And also, I would, I, would, I would push for it to be, you know, equal within male and female because mostly it's a, you, you have certain sports that are mainly dominated by the males. Mm-hmm. And you can notice at the primary, secondary, and tertiary level that the male, the males are are most times more advanced, and so I would try to make it um equal that females and males get the same privileges and 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 the same opportunities in sports. Like um, how how will just easily slide in that he just cut powerlifting, and I see this guy at the gym almost did lifting what five hundred plus pounds. I'm like. Well, you just pick up powerlifting and you already lift so much that that's insane. <laughs> Katina, what's your take on that? I totally agree with Will about you know the financing. You know, the leave is lack of financing, and I don't want to blame the government, but yes, um, they don't know how to budget um this area in Belize, and then. Has a lack of it, especially for volleyball perspective. I know we girls, especially, suffered a lot. We started off on Sun at Near Gordon Park, and then we go to um, Independence Park where it was decent. Then the lights went out, and it hasn't been fixed. I don't think it has been fixed as yet. And then we went to Comprehensive High School, and so. If we just we don't have a stable uh, court play on, and we don't have the proper techniques like for when we are sliding and you know different mm-hmm. fundamentals of volleyball, we cannot practice because of the court and will peel our skin. And I think we should invest in our purple court stadium auditorium for. Ask for it. India, what I would also want to pitch this to, to you, India. What what do you think? What's that one thing that you would do if you were the minister of sport? I think I, I'm shifting a bit away from Katina's and William's perspective, but I focus a bit more on the youth to create here all around our program strength because they're the ones that are going to be carrying on those sports for the years to come. And a lot of times, like right now it's summer, we have a summer camps for the kids, but that's about it for, it's just for summer. So if we continue that training um, year round, then mm-hmm. 
they're going to uh, have more kids to play and then more kids, more teams, more, uh, it's a widespread knowledge about the sport. So I just think I'd focus more on the youth and getting them constantly into a sport that they choose to um, help the country progress in that aspect. Yeah. If you all could rank sports as a development tool in Belize right now from a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest and 1 being the lowest, what would you rank Belize at? Um, I would say, I believe that it's, it's personally, I believe that it's more than half for some people um, as a development tool. I would possibly rank it at like a seven because there's definitely room for improvement. But I do believe that that sports, um, a lot of Belizeans are, are athletes. And um, I do believe that it, it does have a, have a high, a lot of people are, are like, like I said, athletes. So it definitely has a high awareness. And so a lot of people are aware of sports. A lot of people partake in sports, but we we don't develop them how we should. I believe. Right. I would I would rank it at at more or less a seven because there's definitely room for improvement to start developing them at a younger age and 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 give them the the um facilities and stuff that they need to develop. You know how they should to be to be division one athletes and so forth. And that's you know what would your ranking be? It probably be a seven as well. I totally agree with Will. We have potential to do so. time and effort to put in some different changes and help and do that. Right now, I would be ranking me. <laughs> so flip, flipping the question on me now. Um, I think my ranking would be, um, I'd say as a development tool, I think we're not even scratching the surface of what sport could do for our country in terms of the, the social reformation that it could create. I think it's not even scratching the surface in terms of the economic gains that could come from sport as a development tool. Um, and, and I I would rank it at like a, a maybe a five. Um, I think we're we're able to put together teams in our country to represent us in tournaments, but I think in terms of the development stage and that long term athlete development, there is a huge gap. Um, there is not the installation of sports and the importance of health and well being from an early age, um, and and so it's not encultured in us to to see sports as more than just a hobby when we're younger but actually it's something that could be your career or even a, a driver for development um so i would rank it at a five i think we have a long way to go um we're slowly improving i think but there has to be greater investment um for for it to be um closer to that that 10 that number 10 no um, but I, I want to shift gears a little bit, um, get to know Will and, and Katina a bit more, um, hear about their experiences. As, um, so what are some of those standout moments, Will and Katina, that you would say um, is one of those most memorable moments that you had as an athlete at Galen University? Um, I believe, well, for me, you know, first, first and foremost, I believe the first time that you, you you represent the school as an eagle, that's a memorable moment. Like like my first day, the volleyball season is before basketball. So I got on the volleyball team first before the basketball team. But basketball was my sport um heading into Galen. And um my I believe that my my one of my most memorable moments was the first volleyball game. Traveling as a team in the team van, you know, getting getting my own jersey. Um that that was definitely one for me. And then I believe another was actually playing, the, the, you know, the first time you're playing um, at Lib, at Lib volleyball or at Lib basketball. That was another memorable moment for me. And um, in my time there, uh, we, we, we fell short. So I didn't have the, I didn't have a nationals experience. And um, the years, 
the two years when I believe we would have definitely made it all the way and win the Atlantic tournament was when the pandemic hit. So oh, yeah. I didn't have any moments of nationals, but but those those um regional competitions, I I definitely cherished all of them and enjoyed my experience as a Galen Eagle athlete. Yeah, I, I think you give a valuable enough reason as to why we never reached a championship before this year, right? <laughs> exactly. I don't say the same thing too. <laughs> and you, Katina, what's that that's val that valuable moment or that memory? Um my memorable moment was going to Atlib as in being my I think it my three years here and finally having our team and to play at the girls and we took our nice trip on the boat and yeah. having, you know, that nice on together, that was a memorable And even um, sometimes I just recently go to the campus, you know, getting that feel on being on, like being at school and so forth, getting to know the teachers and, you know, just feeling out what you have, Thanks to be with Galen. Now, a part of being a, a student athlete is being able to balance both the sport and academics, right? So um, I know I had my, my struggles with balancing um, time management and stuff like that. I want to hear a bit about your experience as a student athlete. So what was that like in terms of balancing academics and your athletics? Well, well for me, um, I, I, growing up, um, I've always been great at time management. Like, for example, when I was going to high school, as I would get my homework, um, you know, many, many people leave homework to do late at night or in the mornings and they got the their homework is due. What I would do, I would home probably around 3 o'clock every evening and I would dedicate 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock for my assignments or studying if I if I would have a test or a quiz the next day and then from from there I would use um probably about six o'clock to eight thirty to play my sport that I wanted to play. Um at Galen when we were on campus and you know it's not like high school where as as class is done you you know you head straight home sometimes you are required to stay behind. Yeah. And, um, so there um I found time management a bit more challenging because um I was commuting as well. So by the time I get home, it's, it, it's a very slim margin of time I have to, to do assignments and and go to the basketball court. Um, but I'm, I'm grateful that I never let, let one um, take over too much and I, I kept my grades high enough and I also found a way to balance it with my athletics for the school. And you, Katina, how was that like? It was very challenging for me. Um, to transition, transition to um college life and mm -hmm. do my being an athlete. Um, my main focus was my studies. Um, I kind of slap off with going to volleyball practice, and you know, I mean, it's there. But when I go, I make sure I put my all. Like it's mm -hmm. you know, I make you know, I do overwork. I don't overwork myself, but I make sure. I work and reach a level to other girls that's already there. I push myself even harder. And, um, you know, it was really hard because, you know, I have different, my major is education and I have lesson plans and, and essays writing and everything I have to teach and, you know, stuff like that. So it was really challenging for me, but I try my best to make all of them work. Awesome. Well, I, I want to shift gears up a bit more now and, and play a little game just to, just to see where your thought process are, um, your thought process is. So this is called either or either, right? So I'm just going to say one word or the next and you agree either with one or you disagree with the next. So I'll run through a list and then you just quickly give your response to your mic. Well, keep your mic on, Katina. Um, so the first one. What is music or 90s music? It is. <laughs> I like both. Pick one, pick one. <laughs> um, 90s. 90s. Android or iPhone? iPhone. I mean, you see, I see this as a reason why 
we we are Galen students. We know we not deal with that. And you the Android or not, India? Or you the iPhone? <laughs> well, all right, we need to convince India at the end of the show to come over to the greener pastures. Um, but but certainly iPhone this side. Facebook or Twitter? Facebook. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. All right. Instagram. You're considered generation now switch to just now. <laughs> People or animal? Animal. Animal. <laughs> Why animal? I believe um I I feel good when I come home and see my pets excited to see me. When I come when, when I when I reach home, my cousins are excited to see me, my brother not excited to see me, but my pets are always excited. So I prefer pets. Pets pets make you feel the love. Yes. <laughs> My dog always greet me with a lot of love running around the house, you know. I could totally relate. Share food or not share food? Share. It depends on who I'm sharing with. <laughs> Watch sports or play sports? Play. Play. Um, winning the lottery or landing your dream job? Winning the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> so we got some people who actually would have want Brad's come back, no? Um, <laughs> vegetarian or meat eating? Meat. Meat. Especially for what I, I have to a lot of. I, I, I got this question for us because I've considered going vegan so many times. It's it hard for me to make a transition to that vegan lifestyle. But you will, as a power lifter, what, what does your diet look like as a power lifter? Well, um, being honest, it should look a lot different than how I actually eat. Um, but I, I'm, I'm doing it um, for, a, for more of a hobby than mm -hmm. for a for a career in the sport and so i believe that is why i don't limit myself to what i i, I eat and what i do not eat um i to be honest i don't even take supplements i don't even take protein or cream, nothing like that um so my diet mainly is like like for example uh a main belizean dish sunday dinner right i would mm -hmm. eat probably like i'd say i would eat probably like six pieces of meat to one pot spoon of rice and like two pot spoon of potato salad and that's how it is mostly with everything that i eat i eat um i'd say my plate would be like 60 percent meat 20 percent rice and and the next 20 percent side whatever it is that. okay okay and you katina you have any specific diet um no, I just eat in small portions because I have a very small stomach and I when I overeat, you know, I get bloated. So I eat in small portions. Okay. India, do you have any diet? I don't have no diet, but I try my best when I could to stay away from why no one no good for me. Yeah. I'm not that mentally strong for that. I've been like battling for some time now, like trying to switch from just eating um, regular Belizean everyday food to actually eating, like like trying to, to transition to a vegan diet. But it's hard because I feel like if you go to a vegan diet, like if you don't know how to prepare certain stuff, like yeah, it's it just hard. I see people do it very easy, but I'm sure that take like a lot of trial and error to get certain things done. Uh, understand how you put together a certain dish, what that the calorie intake and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. But I I think in terms of like like what Will said, balancing the proportions is something that I've tried to like do throughout my entire career. Like getting in more protein when you're trying to build. Um, in terms of expending energy when you're competing, getting in more carbs, um, that's something that I've looked at. But it's hard. It's hard to, to maintain diet, especially when you live that Belize part, they cook something nice every day. Every other culture got their only nice dish you want to try and stuff. So certainly. India. Yes. I'll put you up on the spot. 
-hmm. What was it that made you initially, and, and this question goes for everybody, made you initially try out for volleyball? Try out for volleyball? Mm -hmm. hmm. I don't think I necessarily tried out for it, but um, well, Miss Rivette, my coach from Belmont, mm -hmm. he was a family friend. So she was basically around my family from I was a child. Okay. You know, her sport is volleyball, so she would uh, recruit from we were younger. Mm -hmm. Me, my older sister, and my younger sister. It was all just um, right there. So yeah, basically went, and then the summer comes that they they had from years ago. Um, that was also another big part of it, where I learned the sport and got to love it and stayed in it. So that's basically it. And then for Galen, I was already playing volleyball already from high school and primary school, and then Coach Tarsa and like what he saw, so that's how I ended up here. Well, um, well, I, I, I see you in the gym. Which sports are I here? And and that's the word to get to right now because I see Will in the gym, and Will is a pretty solid guy, right? Um, when you think basketball player, when you think volleyball player, you are think more lean athletes. Will built different because. <laughs> I don't like, okay, when I say Will, I don't like, okay, Will our power lifter for sure. Um, I could see why he, he pick up power lifting. Um, Will would probably, if he was in the US, be close to being one line, backer almost. Because I could see him just like the clear way for a, car, for a quarterback. But mm -hmm. Will, what made you pick up power lifting? Well, I, I actually... I, I started the gym because I was getting really, really heavy. And this started during the pandemic. I, 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 I got up to 270 pounds. 270 pounds. And so I just wanted to lose some weight. And um, in my first month at the gym, my, my trainer had me doing um, regular exercises, um, hit exercises and using the cable machines. But um, I, was, I was maxing out the cable machines and without, without ever being in a gym before without ever lifting up any weights before. And so he said um, that I'm strong and he asked me, because my trainer is a power lifter, so he asked me if I would be interested in trying it for a month. And so I did. And my first, you know, um, when you start to, to train power lifting, you have to know what, what your maxes are to get an idea of, of how to program yourself to train. And my first squat was 315 pounds. My first bench press was 205 pounds. And my first deadlift was 385 pounds. So right away, my trainer said that, um, he said, this is not normal. And so he, he, <laughs> and he, he programmed, he, he sent me some programs to do. And that's how I started with for lifting. I was just trying to lose some weight and somehow I ended up here. He said his first squat was 315 pounds. No, you know how long it took me for each 315 pounds at just three reps? <laughs> It took a while. So so that, that speaks a lot for itself. And and you, Katina? Well, um, what stands out to me the most, um, it was seeing the other girls that at the time they were practicing at Nia Gordon. Um, you know, I was always at my aunt's house and watching them across the street. I was like, that really looked cool and I really wanted to try something. So I went out one day and uh, it started from then. And I have grown to love it. And I have grown um, volleyball-wise, you know, I was really lazy at first and <laughs> dragging myself to learn. But um, I have grown a lot over the years. So that's basically it. Miss Yvette, my coach, she got me through that. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you say um, as a Galen student who had the opportunity to be a part of the sports team to a young athlete coming out of high school? What would what would your advice be to that person, Will? Because you know, um, I I would would firstly um I would I would tell them to get serious because a lot of the athletes um I believe it's 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 very easily 
to get um, misled when they are student mm -hmm. athletes, and it's very easy to put their put their academics to the side and just focus on on playing sports. And um, I believe that you know the 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 opportunity is there, yes, because you are talented and because you are good in the sport. But mm -hmm. but you're at a university, not only to excel in their craft as an athlete, but you're you're there to also expand their knowledge and get an education. And so I would my, my advice to them would just be to you know train hard and go and do everything as an athlete, but also remember to, to, to prioritize and put grades, grades and school work first, and then you can give what you you can give the remaining to your sport, you know. Yes, I totally agree with that. Um, you know, trans transitioning from high school to college is really hard. You know, you have to no one is really behind you. You know, the teachers won't spoon feed you anymore. So you have to really train yourself mentally to like, oh, I need to do my work. I have um, volleyball or basketball, whatever sport you're playing. You know, you have to do this at a certain time, you know, do your work by the due date, everything. So you just need to focus really hard. And, you know, if you can't handle that on your own, you have other classmates or mentors or, you know, anyone that you can talk to and to help you put you back on track. So I don't know if you all have been, been following the news, but we have a new um, sports director for the National Sports Council. And if you were selected as the national, as the director for the National Sports Council, what would be the first thing that you would do in your first 90 days in office? That's a that's a it's a tough question because I'm 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 not not wanting to be to be um repetitive of earlier when you asked about me uh, sports, um but I believe if I would if I would be the the chairman of the sports council uh, I mean the sports director sorry, I believe one of my one of the first thing that I would push on would probably be. I would like to see more of the more 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 of like national competitions like they did last year. Um, last year they had a ten ten thousand dollar tournament. Mm -hmm. um, to see a lot more of that, um, and so I would I think I think that would be something that I would I would look into, and I would want it to be, I would want each each district to represent themselves then. Mm -hmm. and so um I would I would possibly set up tournaments like that 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 we have um we have every district representing you know you get you you, you find your best twelve people or, or your best fifteen people and you put together a team and and you know the winner the winner takes all and also I would I would look at at making tournaments that don't exclude top level players mm -hmm. because one problem I have is a lot of tournaments here exclude um. Division one people are the food semi people. Not right now. <laughs> and to me, I believe that that is not building the sport and 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 it's not building the leveling of the other athletes because if you keep if you keep um I'd say subpar people playing with each other, they'll never really get better that way. I believe the only way to get better is to is to compete against better and um right. Personally, I think that's a rule that they should they should look into to change because it definitely lowers the, the level of competition for these tournaments, which could be much more exciting. And, and the sports council themselves, I believe, can make a lot more revenue off of those sports if they have the, the top mm -hmm. athletes in the country participating in them. Absolutely, I agree. And you, Katina, in your first 90 days in office, what, what, was that, what is that one thing that you would like to see get done? Um, you know, better competition as well said. Um, especially in the volleyball industry, I noticed that they are biased towards different um volleyball clubs from different districts. And you know, of course, Belize to being the the biggest club. Um, you know, just to include everyone, you know. Although, you know, help if they need help with finance or anything, you know, just we can come together as one. You know, everyone wants to enjoy the sport. So why make it difficult, right? 
Mm -hmm. So that would be my main point. Um, other sports are well, to me, well organized, especially basketball. Mm -hmm. They have everything put together. The officials, you know, the referees and the players itself, they are well put in my opinion. Um, so as football, I'm not sure about softball, but um, you know, just come together and if ever, anyone needs help with anything, you know, have a meeting and see how we can carry that out. And yeah, what's that one thing that you would like to get done if you were supposed to officer? I was thinking more along the lines of will in terms of getting the entire country together. So the different uh, sports coordinators from different communities or different districts just come together and form sort of like a schedule for different weeks, um, for different sports, yeah. different days, just to come together and see what the entire country has to offer in terms of building the sport. That's it. And you? <laughs> Um, definitely, definitely, those are very salient points. I think, I honestly, I think about financing and and how we could 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 propose and and um procure financing. That's the first thing I think about. If I had ninety days in in office as a sports director, the first thing I would do is establish a policy planning unit, um, projects unit that would be able to draft proposals to be able to secure financing to expand and development opportunities that exist across the Belizean landscape. So building on institutional capacity and building um, human resource capacity would be one of the first things I try to tackle um, to set up that institutional framework and structure that's necessary to carry out the mandates of the Sports Council. That would be the first thing I would do if I enter into office in the first 90 days, um, build out a projects policy and planning unit. Because I think if you have that, then you don't necessarily need to rely on the other arms of government to be able to um, secure funding for certain things. Um, you could start proposing um, your own ideas and your own projects um, and and make those suit the social environmental context that your country faces um, as opposed to um, waiting for the, the government to approve certain budget for you to carry out projects. You take the initiative and actually go seek that funding to be able to carry out the activities that you want. But we're, we're running to the, to the end of this afternoon session. Um, I'm pretty sure that you all want to go and grab lunch. Will for sure definitely needs to grab lunch. Six things are chicken with our scoop of rice and beans and <laughs> a salad. I'm sure Will is, is, is ready to grab lunch as well. Um, but for some final parting words, Will, what would you say to the young person watching you that would like to enter into powerlifting? Well, um, I would... First of all, I would just um, want them to know that it, it takes a lot of discipline. Um, not, not, not anyone can, you know, set their mind and say, okay, for a span of so long, I'm going to be just lifting heavy weights and going heavier and heavier and heavier every single week. Um, why I say that it takes a lot of discipline too is because, um, for example, my competition, I have to gain some weight. And basketball was my first love, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's it's hard it's hard that all of my friends are basketball athletes and um, I you know when I pass by Hilltop Basketball Court like it's 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 literally hard looking at that court and 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 not wanting to go out there and be with them and play. The last time I touched a basketball was in March of this year. So from March I haven't played basketball, which is eating me alive, and I can't wait until after my competition so I can get back on the court. Um, so it does. It, it it takes a lot of discipline. You have to set your mind that that you know there's certain things that you're going to have to stop to do as well. It requires a lot of sleep because um, you need you need that recovery for your body. Yeah. You definitely need it. Um, and like like I said, um, the the average person would take supplements. I I chose not to. So. My recovery process is a, is a lot slower, so it, it it takes a lot of it. You will have to take a lot of time then to 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 take care of your body. Um, it's not cheap. It's it's expensive. You know, you have to pay for chiropractors and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I would just lastly end it off with 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 telling them to 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 just mainly focus on 
to be your body is dark because it's, it's a sport and it's very rough on your body. Mm-hmm. So you really, really have to, it's like a vehicle. You, you, in order for it to move, you have to maintain it. And you have to mm-hmm. take care of your body. As with any sport, but I believe powerlifting is a lot more demanding mm-hmm. for, for you to take care of your body, you know. And you, Katina, what would be those those parting words to someone, some young person watching that would want to pick up the volleyball? Uh, so volleyball isn't a hard sport to learn, right? If you know, if you know the basics, you can go from there. You know, if you just have the passion for it, you play a lot better, and you want to keep someone else also. Mm-hmm. It, you know, you will put your all and your effort, and then when someone else don't, you'll feel it, but you can also help and encourage that person as well, you know? It's just, you just have to have the love and the passion for it to really push yourself and get to that higher level. Uh, to wrap up, what, what was your major, Will? Me? Yes, at Galen University. My, um, I'm I studied marketing. Marketing. I, I'm a I'm a proud um marketing major. Uh, I I I got my bachelor's in marketing and I'm currently employed at the National Bank of Belize, where I am a marketing officer. So I am I'm very very um thankful and grateful to Galen for giving me that opportunity to further my studies, and also I'm very happy that the occupation that I have now is in the field that I studied rather than in a different field, you know? Right, right. So you're, you're literally like a stone throw away from where I am right now because I'm right across from FB few. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, and you, Katina, what was your major? I'm studying elementary education. Okay. Yeah, I think I have a year and a half left to get my bachelor's. Um, But... As for so, I thankful that I get assigned to teach um different schools. I have taught Evergreen Primary School and Olag Primary School, and it's very lovely. I can see why I chose elementary education. The students, um, yes, they are very energetic, but that's a part of it, and I love. I'm I'm entertained by them. You know, at last I think last week I had taught a class, a standard five class, and I did a role play. Um, it was really fun. I enjoyed teaching them and, you know, doing my job. And I really hear them talk and understand the topics that I have done. Awesome. Well, uh, I wish you both the best in your, your athletic journey going forward, um, in your job and in your, your schooling. Um, Will, all the best. At, well, I know I see Will every now and again at the gym working out. He's he's always on his grind. Um Oh, and also, if you're watching this video, please go out and support the guy. Um, I think Will will be doing some fundraisers as well to get him um, to, to Cayman. So come out and support the guy, right? Um, Katina, thank you for joining us. Will, thank you for joining us. And India, just like that, we're at the end of another uh, Ask podcast. Like that. Um, there's some, some future leaders here in sports hear the passion. I know Katina is already in the classroom. Will is doing his thing with marketing, but you could hear the passion for sports and, and just how sports has impacted their lives. So thank you all for joining us this afternoon, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Let me ask.